One of the most frequent causes of bad results with footage and photos with the DJI Mini 3 and 3 Pro or other drone is wrong exposure. In this video I will show you all you need to know in order to constantly nail exposure. Choosing the most favorable light conditions makes it much easier to expose correctly. The central hours of a sunny day are to be avoided at all costs, as the shadows are extremely harsh and the contrast too strong. There are good reasons why it is said that these are the hours when photographers and videographers sleep. Excellent light conditions for videos and photos are in the two hours around sunrise or sunset, or when the sun is covered by cloud acting like a big softbox. The idea is to reduce the dynamic range and have a small difference in luminosity between the highlights and the shadows. My favorite time is about half an hour after sunset, when there is still the last twilight acting as the fade light and the artificial lights as the main source. The histogram is the only tool I use for exposing. It tells us a lot about the light condition of a scene. When the bars touch the right edge, the image will be overexposed. This is something to be avoided, as burnt highlight cannot be recovered while editing. When some bars are bunched up against the left edge, the shadows will be very dark, but it is possible to recover them during post-processing, up to a certain extent. For this reason, I always make sure to leave a gap between the last bar to the right and the right edge of the histogram, so that the highlights are preserved. When the histogram has most of the bars in the middle, and there are gaps both to the right and left sides, the image has low contrast. These are the easiest conditions for correct exposure, and correspond to the best hour of the day mentioned earlier. It will be much easier to add a bit of contrast while editing for excellent results. When the bar touch both the right and left edges of the histogram, it is a high dynamic range scene, in most cases containing the sky and with the camera pointing more or less in the direction of the sun. These are the most difficult situations. It is again suggested to leave a small gap to the right of the histogram to preserve the highlight. The shadows will be very dark, but on many occasions it will be possible to recover them, at least partially, although some advanced post-processing is involved. This is why it is suggested to beginners to avoid shooting footage or photos against the sun. An alternative possibility is to avoid burning the highlight and leave the elements on the ground as a silhouette, which can create an interesting effect on certain occasions. In the camera tab of settings, there is another tool to add exposure, overexposure warning. It works by overlaying black and white diagonal stripes to the overexposed part of a scene. Personally, I never use it, as I find it very distracting. And the histogram is all that I need. The settings for exposure in the Mini 3 and 3 Pro are very handy and well organized, but there is something really annoying that DJI should address at some stage. The exposure values are sticky for each individual photo or video mode. Let's say that I have shot some footage and some photos at night, in all different modes. The next day I shoot some footage after sunrise and I find the same settings as the last time I used the drone, so I have to expose again for the new light conditions. If I want to shoot a few photos, the settings are still the one from the night before and I need to expose again. The same goes if I want to do automatic exposure bracketing photos, 48 megapixel photos, master shots, hyperlapse and so on. Let's say that I now turn the camera for some top-down photos and footage. The scene is much darker and I need to expose once again every single time. Having to expose for each photo or video mode is a noticeable waste of time that does not make any sense. 
Once I set the exposure the first time, it is obvious that these are the current light conditions. So all other photos and video modes should be updated to the current exposure values. Easy. Beginners generally start by using auto exposure, which can be accessed via this small icon at the bottom right of the screen, toggling between auto and manual, which is also called pro. In auto mode the exposure is set by the software, we can only access the EV value to adjust the overall luminosity. I find that the app has a tendency to overexpose, therefore I prefer to set the value at minus 0.7 or minus 1. When the camera moves, the exposure values are automatically modified to maintain a constant luminosity, but the individual values for ISO and shutter speed are not shown. But there are two main reasons why it is better to get used to always shooting in manual exposure. When using auto exposure for video, in case of a change in the overall luminosity of the scene, the software will detect it and modify the exposure value. This will lead to a noticeable progressive shift of luminosity in the clip, an evident sign of amateur footage. Another reason why manual exposure is more useful is that on many occasions we must control the individual exposure parameters. Professional videographers prefer to use a specific shutter speed based on the frame rate of the project, 1 50th of a second when using a frame rate of 24 or 25 frames per second, or 1 60th of a second with 30 frames per second. This is known as the 180 degree rule, and it is more useful when filming close to the ground or when the scene contains element in motion, in order to optimize motion blur. To know more about motion blur, please refer to my specific video by clicking on the link on the screen. By tapping on the icon to the right, we access manual mode, labeled as Pro. Then, tapping on the area of the values slightly to the left, we access the window for exposure. The Mini 3 and 3 Pro have fixed aperture, therefore the only value we select are ISO and shutter speed. We can set the values for ISO and shutter speed independently. The MM value at the bottom cannot be modified. It displays the luminosity resulting from the values chosen above compared to the optimal exposure computed by the software. Again, I prefer to see a value of about minus one stop. Whenever possible, it is preferable to set the ISO at its base value, 100, for best quality. But tolerance to ISO has improved so much in recent models of DJI Prosumer line that higher values up to 400 of even and 100 can be used without a noticeable loss of quality. For photography, at times, it is interesting to use a long shutter speed value of around one second for very interesting effects. Please refer to my specific video about long exposure photography with the Mavic 3 and 3 Pro by clicking on the link on the screen. In order to maintain a specific shutter speed value with different light conditions, any filters are needed. You will find details on how and when to use them by clicking on the link on the screen. In the description we will find links to the one I recommend using. In this window we notice a major new feature added by the latest firmware update. There are two new auto buttons for ISO and shutter speed. We can now set one of the two values as auto. Let's say we want a fixed value for ISO, 100, to get the best possible quality. In this case we set ISO to 100 and shutter speed to auto. When the luminosity varies, only the value for shutter speed changes to maintain the correct luminosity, leaving the ISO at 100. Notice that the value MM has now turned to EV for exposure value and can be modified. If we want control over the shutter speed, we select the desired value and set the ISO to auto. And this time, as the luminosity increases or decreases, only the ISO value varies. We can also choose to put both value to auto. It is very similar to using auto exposure, but there are some advantages compared to the traditional auto mode. 
In auto mode, we have no indication of the individual values for ISO and shutter speed. While using this method, we can see both of them. But the room for adjusting the ISO value is limited. So, with a drone with a fixed aperture, the semi-auto exposure has limited value. In the case of a camera with a variable aperture, like the Mavic 3, this option is much more interesting. When taking photos, there are two extra options to make exposure easier. It is possible to use automatic exposure bracketing to take five shots in rapid succession with different exposure values. It is a sort of insurance, as one of the five images will be perfectly exposed. In the case of images shot in the direction of the sun, it is possible to merge the five images to HDR using an editing program. With this technique, the highlights will be taken from the darkest image and the shadows from the brightest one, thus reducing the dynamic range of the resulting merged photo. Click on these links to watch my video about setting for photography or the one for setting for footage with a Mini 3 and Mini 3 Pro. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.